Hey there, my name's Gary Sims and this is Gary Explains. Now you may occasionally have heard of a mobile GPU called the Power VR. So the question for us today is who makes the Power VR GPU and what is it? So if you want to find out more, please let me explain. When you think about the GPUs in our smartphones, you probably think all of the uh, Qualcomm Adreno range or of the Mali range from ARM. So for example, the Snapdragon range have all got Adreno GPUs in them from Qualcomm or chips, for example, like the Kirin range from Huawei will have Mali uh, GPUs in them. But as Yoda would say, there is another. So Imagination is a chip design company that builds uh, lots and lots of different types of chips, including uh, GPUs specifically aimed for mobile and for embedded applications. So for example, the MediaTek Helio P90 has a Power VR GPU in it. In fact, in the past, you'll also find some Power VR GPUs in some Intel Atom chips. You can also find it, for example, in chips from Unisoc. Now, historically, and most interestingly, you also found Power VR GPUs inside of Apple's uh, processors. So for example, way back when Apple made the iPhone 4, it had the Apple A4 processor, and that had a Power VR GPU in it. And that kind of history between uh, imagination and Apple continued for several years until you get to the Apple A9, which had the uh, Power VR GT7600 in it, and then Apple and imagination kind of went their separate ways. The whole story about that will probably be kind of something we'll read about kind of in history and memoirs over the years to come. But basically, they went different ways. The, probably the uh, A10 processor from Apple had some kind of technology in it from imagination. There may have been some licensing going on, but basically they went different ways. And this was obviously negative for uh, imagination. Lots of things happened. They had to get rid of the uh, CEO. There was a change of other board members. Uh, imagination also owned the uh, MIPS CPU. Uh, and that had to be sold off as a separate thing. And then ultimately Imagination itself was bought by an equity fund. But Imagination didn't die. It's still around today and it has survived this quite hard times that it's gone through. And it survived for several different reasons. The first is, of course, is that its GPUs are not just only in smartphones. So although it was reliant heavily on Apple's business, it did have other partners. So for example, you find power VR GPUs in things like uh, set-top boxes, smart TVs, even car infotainment systems. Now, of course, we don't really know much about those. I mean, who knows what GPU you've got in your car infotainment system? We just don't know that kind of thing. It's only when you get to things like smartphones that people talk about the uh, GPU and the, the CPU supplier. Now, as long, along with Apple, also like MediaTek were using it. And as I said earlier, the P90 has got the GM9446 power VR GPU in it. And also you'll find it in chips like the X30 and the P22 and the X10. In fact, there's quite a few MediaTek chips that use the Power VR GPU. So you just heard me say there the GM9446. Well, that's just a number. Is that a good GPU? Is that a bad GPU? Is it got good performance, bad performance? If you were going to buy a Helio P90 base smartphone, is, is, is that a good chip for? Is that a good GPU for, for that chip? So let's have a look at how they do their naming scheme. The first thing to know is that Imagination sell two major types of GPU architecture. The first is their rogue architecture, which the majority of their uh, chips are built on. Then there is the Furion uh, uh, GPU architecture. Now we won't talk much about the Furion GPU architecture because today it's not actually found in any chips. Chips that you can buy, uh, smartphones you can buy with kind of uh, power VR GPUs are all based on this rogue architecture. And it's been around since, you know, like 2012 and it's been through various generations uh, every year. So that first digit, I said the GM9446, the first digit, the nine, tells us it's the ninth generation. So there are other chips which we might find like the 6650, for example, that's the sixth generation. So the 9446 is the ninth generation with the idea that every generation gets better than the generation before. 
The second number, in this case four, tells you how many pixels the GPU can process per clock cycle. So when you see four, you basically need to double it. So in this case, four means eight. It can process eight uh, pixels per clock cycle. Now we're talking per clock cycle. So if the GPU is clocked at, let's say, 500 uh, megahertz, then you can do the maths and work out how many uh, pixels it can process in one second, for example. So 500 megahertz, 600 megahertz, whatever it happens to be, multiply that by the number of pixels it can do per clock cycle. Okay, and if you see a smaller number, for example, two, then that means four pixels per clock cycle. If you see one, it means two pixels per clock cycle. And when you get to the third digit, that's also a four in this example, that tells you about the computing power of the GPU. So a four, for example, means 256 16-bit floating point operations per clock cycle. So again, it's not per second, it's per clock cycle. So you have to multiply that by the clock frequency of the GPU. If that number was a two, for example, it would be 128 16-bit floating point operations per clock cycle. And if it was a one, it would be 64 uh, 16-bit floating point operations per clock cycle. And the final digit there, in this case a 6 from the GM9446, is kind of a feature flag. So different GPUs can have different features. For example, uh, there is a technology that all the major GPU manufacturers have where you can compress, in a lossless sense, compress a frame of data before you send it from one part of the GPU to another or another part of the SOC. And it turns out that actually the energy required to compress it and transfer it is less than just the energy to transfer it all in one go without it being compressed. And so this lossless compression is built in and it can actually make the chip more efficient. However, it's an optional piece of technology because you can just transfer the frame of data without compressing it. And so there's a flag in that last digit which tells us whether that processor has that technology or not. And as you can imagine, different things get switched on and off in each GPU that give it different sets of features. So that last number, the higher the number, the more features it's got basically. Now, when we talk about CPUs, we're very comfortable with the idea of a dual core or a quad core or an octa core processor, where we know that each core is in fact a complete CPU that can run its kind of its own task, its own process. Things are slightly different when you get to GPUs. Now, as you read the marketing material of different companies, they might talk about the number of cores they have. So in some companies, it's quite low. You might say this is a 10 core GPU, a three core GPU, but other companies might say we have 192 core GPU, and there seems to be a big difference between them. So let's try to understand how Power VR fits into this whole kind of core scenario. So way back at the beginning when GPUs were uh, first invented, there were two types of shader. There was a pixel shader and a vertex shader. Now the vertex shader would do the 3D transformations from the 3D world into the 2D world, including you know scaling and rotation and so on. And the pixel shader would set the color of any particular pixel on the screen, and they were programmable. You, the, the game designer would write a little program that would run inside of that shader core that it would do what it has to do for vertexes and for pixels. Now, later on, we had what's called the unified shader model, and that basically means that each shader core could do either the pixel stuff or it could do vertex stuff so it was kind of universal it could do anything that was required of it and around that time the idea of a core and a shader kind of became synonymous so if you had 10 shaders you'd say 10 shader cores but to increase throughput over time the GPU designers made those shaders fatter uh, in the middle. So while they were sharing lots of logic at the beginning and some logic at the end, in the middle, the bit that actually did all the mathematical calculations actually got fatter so it could do multiple ma multiplications uh, at once, multiple bits of maths at the same time. And so you could actually double or quadruple the throughput through a shader by making it kind of wider in the middle. And now you have a question, is that a one shader core with kind of four execution paths or something like that or is it for shader cores so and this is where we then start getting to the whole marketing speak about what each processor has so for example the gx6650 power vr gpu has six clusters of these arithmetic units all grouped together. So you could say, well, if there are six clusters of them, six batches of them, maybe that's a six core uh, GPU. But then on the other side, because those 
clusters are quite fat in the middle, actually the number of calculations it can do in any one clock cycle, there are 192 uh, arithmetic units. So maybe that's really 192 core uh, GPU. So you can see that you can go from 6 to 192 uh, very quickly, but actually be talking about the same actual architecture. That's why PowerVR used this naming scheme, the GM9446, because it tries to reveal the actual internals of the GPU without going to maybe too much of a uh, generalization 6 core or 192 core. It's also a salient lesson for us to understand that when we hear about the processing power of different uh, GPU manufacturers to try to really understand what number it is that they're quoting for us. So what does this all mean for the future of imagination and the power VR GPU? Well, first of all, it's still with us today because as I said, for example, the P90 has a power VR GPU in it, as do other MediaTek processors. So we're still gonna see power VR GPUs uh, in our smartphones over the next few years. However, the landscape for GPUs and SOCs and processors changes very rapidly. Just as Apple and, and Imagination went their separate ways, there is a possibility that Imagination will find another major partner to be a supplier for the GPU technology. So there are, of course, possibilities. We could think about uh, Samsung, although they very much have a long-term arrangement with ARM. There are lots of rumors about Samsung changing up their GPU game. Does that involve imagination? We, we don't know, but these are the kind of things that can happen. Uh, high silicon, that's the Huawei's uh, uh, processors, they could technically switch over to PowerVR. However, that's probably unlikely because uh, they very much are in a very strong relationship with ARM. But of course, there are other, for example, uh, SOC makers. I mentioned Unisoc, I think, earlier on. They also make uh, smartphone processors and they can continue to use power VR. Uh, Xiaomi also have their own uh, processor division with it called Pinecone and they have the Surge S1 processor and there's meant to be a Surge S2. We haven't seen it yet. Could that switch over to, for example, to using a power VR? And there's even companies like LG who for a long time have been rumored to be working on a new processor. Uh, and there were whispers, these are unsubstantiated rumors, but there were whispers that it was gonna be built by Intel on its 10 nanometer process. And then Intel 10 nanometer process didn't really kind of materialize. And so LG pulled back from that. So did LG abandon that? Are they still working on it? Will it have a Mali GPU in it? Will it have a power VR GPU in it? We just don't know. But it, for Mag Imagination as a company, there are lots of possibilities uh, in the future. And it's also worth mentioning that we are now moving very much into an age where machine learning is becoming a core part of the technologies that we use every day for photography, for voice recognition, for other such things. And of course, we want to be able to run those things on our actual smartphones rather than sending the data up to the cloud. And Power VR GPUs can run machine learning tasks and Imagination also have a dedicated neural processor unit that you can license off them. So we may also see Imagination technology uh, actually in our smartphones in, let's say, the, the neural processor, if not in the uh, GPU. And finally, it's worth mentioning that Imagination have been a long time investor in hardware-based ray tracing. Now, NVIDIA have been making splashes in the headlines with, of course, their desktop processors for, with uh, hardware ray tracing and uh, Imagination own a lot of intellectual property in that area. Now, we, there have been no announcements about whether NVIDIA has licensed anything from uh, Imagination. Imagination have a strong portfolio in terms of patents that uh, cover hardware rendering. There's been no announcements, but we do know that Imagination do actually license their uh, power, their ray tracing uh, technology uh, to other companies, although that hasn't been made public which companies those are. So will we see ray tracing in smartphones in the future using, for example, ray tracing hardware from, from PowerVR? We just don't know, but these things are certainly going to be explored as we go further uh, down the road. Okay, so that's about it. So when you next time look at a chip, let's say like a MediaTek chip, 
and you see it's got a power VR GPU in it, now you know what it is. It is an alternative to Qualcomm and to ARM, and it was a long time history working together with Apple, and now they are continuing to seek partners who are looking for uh, ways to incorporate their GPU technology into their processors. Okay, my name is Gary Sims. This is Gary Explains. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe and uh, well, that's it. I'll see you in the next one.